Today we're going to visit with Wildlife Division Chief Casey Anderson and talk about the big three, moose, elk, and bighorn sheep. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Welcome to the program, Casey. Casey, when is the deadline for the big three lottery, moose, elk, bighorn sheep, and how can people apply? So the deadline's gonna be March 23rd, and people go on our North Dakota Game and Fish Department website, log into their account, and start the application process from there. Go through and pick their unit and their type of animal they wanna to try to apply for, and see if they get lucky. <laughs> okay, well let's, let's take each individual species individually. Let's start with elk. How do elk numbers look this year compared to last year? So elk numbers are looking pretty good. Um, populations are, looks like slightly increasing um, with the surveys we were able to do. And so because of that, licenses have gone up a little bit, um, just 563 I, I believe. And, uh, and that includes just over 200 any licenses in that pool and so now all of our units um, had a slight increase. Okay, so let's talk about the E6 unit uh, on the Standing Rock Reservation. Uh, started that hunt, what, a number of years ago. Explain that a little bit. How's that going? And so E6 is kind of an interesting story. We had a few private landowners down in that own land within the Standing Rock Reservation. And they had called us and said, you know, we've got, we've got a number of elk down here. And so we started, um, working with Standing Rock uh, Game and Fish Department down there and decided we needed to get up and do some good surveys of the area and it's kind of uh, a neat area that Porcupine Hills area down within the reservation boundaries in and it did hold a fair number of elk and so we were actually able to open that as a special unit um, because of the number of elk and the number that could be harvested down there for some extra opportunity and so as we worked with Standing Rock, we, we created an MOU with them um, where the tribe has an allocation of licenses and then North Dakota citizens um, that are not tribal members have an allocation of licenses. And so we go from there and, and continue to work with them, do surveys every year if we get the opportunity and uh, kind of help. We're helping them manage elk and, and helping us manage and they're helping us manage elk because there's some private inholdings within the, the reservation boundaries. Okay, Casey, let's move on to the elk study in Western North Dakota. Uh, two or three years ago, we call it a number of animals. How's that going? Yeah, so we started that study, like you said, about three, maybe even four years ago now. Um, it's a long-term study tracking elk movements, um, habitats they're using throughout the year. And so we've got GPS collars out there on a number of elk um, in the December of 2020, we added some more collars um, to bolster that study a little bit. And it, I mean, it, it includes everything from harvest rates on elk when we have hunters out there to habitats they're using, habitats they're using certain times of the year and how wide they're moving and what areas they're moving. And so that study should be wrapping up probably in a couple years. Um, but yeah, it's given us a lot of neat information and, and some of those elk will move quite a ways helps you guys manage the elk population. Yep, helps us manage the elk um, based on, you know, maybe helps us figure out ha different habitat needs, um, helps us know where they're spending most of their time um, and that kind of thing. And then also the harvest rate, you know, um, as we go into hunting seasons and things and set license allocations, that harvest rate gets kind of important. Absolutely. Uh, let's move into moose. How many licenses this year compared to last year? So yeah, the moose licenses are down a little bit. Um, the moose populations are um, stable to decreasing in some of the units, um, which is on purpose. Um, we kind of had a situation where, especially up in that northwestern part of the state, we were getting a lot of moose and, and uh, tolerance was not as high as the number of moose out there for, for that on the landscape. And, and the moose population was doing really good. And so we were giving out a lot of tags for you know opportunity since they were on the landscape and so we're down to just over 400 licenses this year um, and so but still a pretty good opportunity for folks who want to try for a moose license. Casey are there still units that are closed for moose? Yeah the two units up in the northeast part of the state which 
interestingly enough, is what we would have considered, you know, 20 years ago to be our traditional moose habitat. Um, those wooded kind of swampy, boggy areas um, in the Pembina Gorge and areas like that. But uh, the population after um, brainworm kind of came in uh, really hasn't been able to rebound very well. And uh, so there's, there's still some moose up there, but to have a huntable population, it's just not, not quite high enough. Okay, uh, something hunters should be aware of, both applying for moose and elk, is some of the chronic wasting restrictions. Explain that a little bit. So we have, we have um, tested deer across the state and moose and elk when we get um, hunter harvested critters in that we can get a sample out of. And so units M10 and M11 and units E2 and E6. E6 is added this year. We've actually found chronic wasting disease within those units. And so when that happens, we, we put carcass movement restrictions on to try to keep CWD in that area and not have it moved out across the landscape to a new area at all possible. And so those, those four units, the two moose units and the two elk units, have a carcass restriction in place. And you know that's something for folks to consider when they apply for a license because it, it does change a little bit on how you're going to have to take care of that animal after you harvest it. Sure. Um, it may, you know, may be required to bone it out, quarter it out, um, leave those high risk carcass parts in the field or in the unit. And so we just want people to be aware of that when they apply so that they can prepare for that as a once in a lifetime opportunity. Let's move on to bighorn sheep. Now that's bighorn sheep, you apply at the same time, but it's a little different. Explain that. Yeah, so the bighorn sheep, when we had the pneumonia outbreak uh, back a few years, um, we had to close the season. Um, and so that, that really started a shift in how we do this bighorn sheep license allocation because um, our bighorn sheep biologist is out there all summer long um, keeping tabs on these bighorn sheep and counting lamb recruitment, um, looking at the rams, are there you know, harvestable rams and things like that in the population. and so. We probably have the most sheep we've ever had in the state. Um, that being said, it's still not a whole lot of animals. And so, and then the ones you're trying to harvest are, are mature rams. And so if you have a pneumonia outbreak or some other instant instance on the landscape, that can really take some of those out or, or not make that opportunity available and we have to close the season. And so it works better to have people apply and then as we do our counts and our surveys throughout the summer, we can then determine as we come up closer to hunting season, how many available tags we have to put out on the landscape. And so if there is a season, uh, people will be notified after the survey and yep. after, yeah, usually, early September. Yeah, usually sometime in late August, early September, um, we'll, we'll come out with the number of licenses available and then start calling those, those lucky hunters that got drowned for those few licenses. But, Okay, uh, there is one change if there is a season to the bighorn sheep uh, yeah. units, explain that. So we, we added a unit, um, B5 we call it, and so what was really happening is, is B4 was a, a fairly large unit. We actually had two distinct herds within that unit. And so we were kind of getting into this, um, every once in a while we, we would get, say we had two licenses in B4, we would get both rams harvested out of the same herd. Um, and so we really want to try to do a couple things with that. We want to try to make sure we are harvesting a ram out of the other herd in, that is now in B5. Um, and also, you know, as we give out licenses, it's when a hunter has a bighorn sheep, I mean, it's a fairly coveted opportunity. And so they essentially, you know, if we give out the same license as we did last year, we'll have a unit to themselves. Um, and we'll get a harvest of a ram out of each one of those herds. Um, or or ever how ma however many licenses we give out, we can directly target herds now of bighorn sheep, um, which is important when you have a small population. Absolutely. Um, one thing we should remind people, these are once in a lifetime opportunities in North Dakota. Yeah, so f for the general public, when you apply and you get drawn, it's a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It's not. I'm going to get one once in my lifetime. There are many people that will never receive a tag be, just because of the sheer number of applicants 
and the number of licenses that are available on the landscape. And so it really is kind of a unique opportunity in North Dakota. Um, something that we hope when those that get drawn, you know, really appreciate that opportunity because, the, you know, they're obviously never going to see it again at this point. And when you apply, you should do your homework, make sure you know the area and, and you know, where you're putting in so you have a good, good chance of being yeah. successful. Yeah, and it, you know, a lot of these units, depending on the species you're hunting, you know, it's a, in North Dakota's 90 plus percent private lands. And so, you know, there is an opportunity in some of the units um, where we have a larger chunks of public land in it to maybe harvest that animal on public land. But in a lot of cases, you're gonna need to start talking to landowners and things like that, especially once you get drawn, um, to really kind of figure out, you know, where you might have an opportunity to hunt. Okay, deadline's March 23rd. Yep. A lot of great information, Casey, thank you.